amounts of damage with her. <laughs> like in Smash 4, like it was just ridiculous how much like DPS that she had, you know? Well, like we had the same tools here, but the damage was it's like cut in half, basically. It, it was definitely toned down. Yeah. They eliminated some of the tools, but they brought them back in the latest patch. So now that she's kind of looking like her former self, it makes sense that Void would give her give her a shot again. Oh yeah, he's looking like he's having some success too. I, I know he's been streaming a lot using Sheik as well. So it definitely sounds like you know he's having fun with the character, and that's it's kind of important in this game. You need to have. You need to enjoy playing the character you're playing or else right. uh, you're probably not going to perform as well. I mean, honestly, with the cast of 70 characters, there's going to be at least one matchup that your character will struggle against. There's no perfect catch-all like character that will beat every other character in the game. So I feel like to a certain extent, play whoever you love to play. And if there's a matchup that truly frustrates you and you feel like that's hurting your love for the character, no harm in picking up a secondary, you know? That's true. This is definitely a game that's Transforming into a game of secondaries, where your secondary is going to matter. And wow, you can see, like, Boy just continuing to use this, this chic tools. I like the way that he's implementing down air into his tool set, because he, he'll do it, like, inside his opponent's shield, which will not only delay the landing, but kind of trick, mix up, like, their opponent thinking that they drop shield to, like, get a grab or something, or a punish, and then all of a sudden, you know, the earthquake will bump him out. But that's a great up smash from Chag. Gonna clean up that stock. Right. And what you were saying about the down air, you know, with a lot of landing lag just cut in half for most of the cast, and you know, that down air has deceptively little end lag. You know, there's still a little bit, like in terms of like ultimate standards, like there's a lot of it, but you know what? It's still up to the other player to kind of like anticipate that and realize that hey, this has a little bit more end lag that I might be able to punish if I'm quick enough. But she kind of capitalizes on that, throws out a quick F till or maybe a fair. And all of a sudden, you just fall into her trap. Mm -hmm. definitely make sure that Void doesn't have an opportunity to start up his combos. See, really, we'll see Void get hit like uh, one or two hits in, and then either Chag escapes or he throws out a quick nair to just break the combo. Yeah. Good F tilt on the back air. I love all these down tilts at the ledge just to pressure Chag to pick an option quickly. And you know if they normal get up, then that's a grab or a forward tilt. If they roll behind, that's a forward tilt. And really, it's just okay. When are you gonna jump? It's very smart for. I think this this pick actually works against Void the most because he's not gonna really have any platforms to reset with his up air. And like just with the amount of tech skill that Void has, he's really gonna. He's always been proficient about using platforms. That's just one tool that Chag's eliminating with this pick. All right. But I feel like at the same time, though, Inkling kind of likes to use platforms too to extend her combos. Especially and with those up throw, up air combo kills. Right. So I feel like Sheik's combo game hasn't really changed all that much. You know, platforms did help her, but like she wasn't totally reliant on them. But like. Inkling can get so much more off of platforms than Sheik does that I feel like the no platform stage helps Sheik out a little bit more in that sense than Inkling. I feel like that Sheik almost needs those tools. Like, yeah, she's still like a bit of a straightforward character. She's great frame data, great mix-ups. But just having those extra tricks in your pocket that can really make a difference, especially in a matchup that's just so straightforward with two characters that whose co confirms are very telegraphed. Right. There's that down air mix up again. Like, just delaying. <laughs> what? <laughs> Landing F smash. Right. So as you were saying with the telegraph kill confirms, you know what? I feel like, yeah, they're they're strong, like super early stock takers are telegraph. But as long as you get the bread and butter stuff, like Sheik has a little bit of quicker options than than Inkling. You know the. The needles to bouncing fish being one, just bears off stage. Uh, and yet again, even the grenade is a lot kind of like the roller where like it's slow, it's laggy, but if it hits, it will kill. And you can see Void making use of all that great frame data. He's really just trying to get one hit confirmed into a throwing out the grenade. And the needle's not going to connect. Like a low profile in case it does get hit. Trash canceling is still a thing in the game. Ooh. I didn't even see that splat ball come out. 
The 162 gets the Tomahawk. There's the forward throw. And yet again, I feel like at this point, he's just looking for the grab up or the ledge option. Going in deep. Uh, not going to find an air offstage, though. But yet again, all this oppressive pressure from Sheik. And you know, Inkling kind of just has to sit back and you know, respect it. But eventually, you have to commit to something. And you know what? Void was looking for that option and manages to sneak in his bear for the kill. Yeah, whiff punishing is the name of the game, especially when you have amazing frame data. And I just like that Void was staying outside of like a certain range from Tag because it would give him enough time to react if Brawl Roller does come out or really whatever the approach option was going to be from Tag, Void had enough time to react. Right. So running it right back to Final Destination. And both these characters really... Uh, perform better with platforms. So they're both eliminating that option from each other. So it's understandable why we'll probably see all the games on this stage, if not uh, Town and City. We got again, oh, here's Sheik's speed coming out. A little bit uh, oppressing Inkling a lot more in the matchup in neutral. Like, but at the same token, she does have to win neutral way more often than Inkling does in order to secure those percents. Up and shield a little bit earlier and getting inked up just a bit. Falling back, are going to get parried, and more ink goes on to Void. Again, and this is kind of like the comeback factor for Inkling. You know, when you're inked up like that, you just take way more damage than you normally would. So this is kind of a way for Inkling to kind of make up the, the damage output a little bit, being like, okay, I might not have the extensive combos that you have, but when I do land something, it's going to hurt a lot. True, but when you're inked up, the only way you'll take damage is if you get hit. And as you can see, Void was really able to avoid and evade Chag the entire time, just slowly racking up the damage and then landing bouncing fish. Uh, needles to bouncing fish to pick the stock. Forced to use bread and butter as an up throw into, into Nair just to get some attack on damage, and that down smash still not enough. Both characters kind of like resetting the neutral right here. Gets the Nair. Was looking for the jump with the forward tail, but not going to be able to find it. Gets him off stage, but here's the up throw, and this is the up air. You know, I feel like he just wasn't prepared for that hard DI to the light. Okay, getting the sour spot of down smash as well, and getting able, being able to poke out that back air is going to help out Chag. 136%. I think we're in the window where Chag will have to, have to get an honest kill. All right. I mean, it stopped being. It started being on as probably like 30% ago. But yet again, manages to sneak in that roller, get the up smash, and you know what? 84% is a lot of percent for Inkling, but you know what? She's going to struggle to kill too, so probably doesn't have to worry about dying until probably like 130, 140%. Yeah, and that's a good point. Unless, like, outside of getting like F smashed at the ledge, Ooh, I don't even know if F smashed, really, especially with no raid. But. Yeah, the down air into up smash, needles into bouncing fish. Really, those are the dangerous conversions that you have to look out for at those low percents. But being at the ledge, ooh, definitely have to watch out for the rising back airs to clip the two frame or just clip your recovery in general. Right. Or just a normal get up and then worrying about the, the two frame with the F tail on the normal get up. Mm -hmm. Opting to go for the Nair, probably didn't realize that. He was a little bit too low for the bouncing fish to connect, so opting to go for the guaranteed damage and manages to finish out the stock anyways with that up air. Oh, I love that F tilt into up air is still, still a conversion. <laughs> that was like my favorite conversion from Smash 4 that she has, which is like all the F tilt shenanigans. Okay, forward throw. Going to catch the neutral getup and attack on a little bit extra damage with bouncing fish, but double up air to answer back from Chag. We're covering a bit of space with the uh, flat bomb as well. I love what Void is doing when he threw out this flat bomb. Because you know, like, Inklings love to follow up with a grab afterwards. You know, they wait for the explosion, they wait for you to stay in shield, and then they follow it up with a grab. So Void just double jumping in neutral like that, kind of avoiding all of Inklings' you know, shenanigans, and you know what? Just really overpowering her within the neutral. And once she's off stage, she gets the needles to bounce the fish, and it was a done story. Yeah. I mean, the name of the game for Void definitely seems to be going on stage and challenging Chag's recovery. We know that Inklings typically get away with recovering to the ledge almost for free. You know, it's, very, it's, a, it's a discount at most. Uh, I feel like in this game, people don't go for like off-stage edge guarding 
as much as they should with the characters that they play. The reversal is scary in this game. Getting on that ledge is even an even worse position than it was in the previous game. <laughs> so, you know, just willingly putting yourself on the ledge cannot be a good look sometimes. But as you see, there's the fair string, and even getting the mix up. Frame trap with the bouncing fish to a floor there. Just sticking at the ledge, 37%. Easy damage, but now Tag answering back with a couple of of his own. Ooh, snuffs out the bouncing fish. Almost took the double jump there too, but you know what? Gets enough height with the up B and yet again, like she has so many resources off stage that she doesn't really have to worry about ever getting him. Not really. Void even expanding his his uh, needles right there in case Tag did decide to go off stage. Okay, air dodging. I love the use of the brawl air dodge. Just because it has like low landing or low lag on it in general. But if you fast fall, it covers so much space. So that S smash is gonna get back thrown and yeet right into the blast zone. And yet again, no Sheik, super impressive. But you know what? When you throw out a lot of moves that hit on shield, you no know, Palutena. All she needs is one grab, one nair to start her combo tree. And I don't know if you've been noticing, but Check's been actually going for like raw back air or raw nair just to make sure that he keeps Void center stage, so that he can continue the nair train. Oh, very smart. Using that anti-air up tilt from Palutena. It does have a lasting hitbox, which is, even if you delay in the air void, you're still going to get caught. All right. Oh, I love that. The parry to up air, but you know what? Not going to be quite enough. And oh, read the no. wrong way, but it doesn't matter because the fear from Chad causes him to SD. That's unfortunate. Hate to see that happen. Yeah. But this is a local, and you know what? This is where you want to make those mistakes. Right. Rather here than at main stage, right? Oh, yeah. You know, and I love what Void is doing to adapt to the Palutena in there. So he's crouching and kind of waiting for Palutena to land. No, realizing that Sheik is a relatively tall character, so those nares would connect while standing. But yet again, if you're being too oppressive, you gotta really respect Palutena's neutral grab. It's probably one of the best neutral grabs in the entire game. Okay, good match coming out from Tag, but it's not enough to save him. But what is the positioning of that uh, explosive flame? That was crazy. Yeah. The double continues. Wow, up to into up air, up air. Void forced to fastball air dodge below the stage just to recover. And here we go. And yet again, I like how Void is mixing up how he pressures them because he realized that the last time he went for that board till he got grabbed. But yet again, getting grabbed out of that board till it's not safe on block. But yes, it is this time because he jabbed right afterwards. But you know what? You see that recovery teleport into counter. Tag was ready for Void to throw her out a back air or nair just to try and catch the recovery. And instead, Void caught a counter in his face. Now, Void sitting at one stock. This switch to Palutena is really working in Tag's favor. Right. Here we go. Back on the ledge. How's he going to get off? No. Reds the double dump and not going to be quite enough, but barely avoids the explosive flame right there. Right. You have to make. You have to keep track of when you expend those resources. Really, you know, one air dodge makes it such a valuable resource. The down tilt the up air connect. Now, last stock, a piece. But it's not going to take much to get rid of Void's last stock. All right. Especially with all Palutena's plenty of kill power, especially with that back air, that invincible no shield. No shenanigans oh, back air. Yeah. Yeah. That back air is just like. Or that entire shield is basically saying like, like, you want to throw out an attack in neutral? No, and she whacks you with it. And that that is the shield in a nutshell. Okay, well, I'm not expecting Ward to switch characters. He's, hmm. I think he's dedicated to Sheik all tournament today, even if he goes to game five. Right. But I don't know. This uh. I'm expecting to see a much more patient Void, at least in neutral. Yeah. Uh, just look for his conversion and then combo like even harder. Getting caught by the explosive flame and then converting into a Nair. You know, I love what Chag is doing. Uh, you know, you, utilizing every single hit to kind of convert it to a next hit. And yet again, throwing out that neutral air again, just waiting for Void to drop his shield and then comboing off of it. Oh, great wave. Ooh, I love the fake for the double for the ledge trump, and then it manages the double jump back fair, but catches the two frame on the ledge, catches another two frame, 
catches it a third time, and yet again, Chag realizes that, okay, the ledge is not the answer here. Let's go onto the stage this time. Yeah. You got, you're going to be susceptible to that type of edge guarding, especially with teleports. You do have a few extra frames of, of uh, to get two frames. You see Boy trying to do it again there, but overextends, almost dying to a back throw right there at below 100. But, oh, interesting. Chag went a little bit low. I feel like he thought he could recover, but just barely went a little bit too deep for that. And I love what Boy did right there. You know, you throwing out the grenade in order to cover his landing. And Chag had a cute idea trying to counter it, you know, trying to reflect the damage, but unfortunately it got sent into the opposite direction and so Void was able to get a punish off of it. I don't even know what would happen if you, because he, all he did was uh, reflect the explosion. I don't think it like goes anywhere. It just makes it so that Chag doesn't get hurt by it. But it, it also does that like if Void were to like roll get up or like maybe oh, even yeah, like it, jump. It would like, put it in his possession. Right. But Void was definitely um, chilling at the ledge. So there's a Mare, reads the roll in and try and go for a down air for a reset potentially, but you know what? That's going to get stuffed out by the Nair. And again, Chag just looking for the option. Void just barely escaping that explosive flame right there. So that was such good reaction from Void. You know he wanted to jump in, saw the explosive flame animation come out and immediately double jumps away to avoid it. I mean, this is kind of what I was talking about earlier in this, in this game is that we're going to see Void really slow it down. He's going to look for his his moments to really abuse and punish. Uh, and he's gonna play a little bit more patient. Yeah. As you can see, he's really like trying to just abuse his reaction time and uh, just react to whatever Tag is trying to do and to get the correct punish. But, oh, not carrying the grenade, that's a thing. Yet again, try crossing up the shield, but unfortunately Chad guessing right on which way he was gonna land up on it. It's a throw. There's a Nair. Sheik is just looking for one of these little pokes, a forward tilt, a down tilt, anything to take wow. the stock. But you know what? When Sheik has to work so hard to find her one opening, Chad can just throw out an up air. And you, you touch it, you touch that heal at once, and all of a sudden you just go poof and you die. Yeah, guy indeed just disappeared. It sent straight to heaven. Yeah. The goddess has spoken. He's falling back here, yep. Oh, I love that with the two frame. And even then, like, he didn't go for the, the two frame spike to get it on the ledge, you know? He, he didn't give him that opportunity to tech it. He's just like, no, I know the timing of this. You're going to be sent out into the blast zone. There you go. I like to use the auto radical coming out from Tag, especially when Void is doing it in a position where Void is kind of close to the ledge, but he's still really unsure of, like, if Void's going to go low, if Void's going to go bouncing fish above. But using the auto radical forces Void to burn a resource, which uh, can give Chag a better idea on how he needs to, to set up his traps. And okay, all the, Yeah, all those resets from the drag down up air. You know, rem reminiscent of the Joker combos that we see MK Leo do all the time, but unlike Joker, Sheik doesn't really have a good combo ender for that. You know, the best she can get is maybe like a fair to bouncing fish if she's in like the right percent in spacing for it, but otherwise like it's just probably gonna be fair or nair. Well, I think Void actually I think she does have a, a good ender for it. It's just a little bit more difficult to do than Joker. Because typically jokers will just like end with the down smash or the up smash, depending on how they bounce. Uh, but I think she has to go for a down air into up smash. Or a down to F tilt into up air. So it's still a bit of a mix up. It is. Boy's Again. working to try and get those last stock and advance to the next set. And there we go. Yet again, that F tilt is such a great kill confirm option for Sheik. You know, very, probably one of the best t uh, tools in her game.